the Northampton class were the second design of cruiser prepared by the United States that were bound by the terms of the Washington Naval Treaty. This limited the main battery of guns to 8-inch calibre or less, and displacement to 10,000 tonnes at most. The first attempt at a ship obeying these limits had been the Pensacola class, but these ships had a number of significant issues, with an unsatisfactory main armament and protection that was more in line with that given to light cruisers rather than the heavy cruisers that they were supposed to be, although the term didn't exist yet. As a result, only a pair of these ships were constructed before production switched to the Northampton class. As a result, the class would consist of six ships, the Northampton, Chester, Louisville, Chicago, Houston, and Augusta. All of the ships would be laid down in 1928 and come into service during 1930 and 1931. The main battery consisted of nine 8-inch guns in three triple turrets, with a pair super firing forward and a single turret to the rear. This established a number and layout of guns that would be followed in every single American heavy cruiser design from then on. In keeping with many designs from the 1920s, the anti-aircraft battery was present, but relatively weak, consisting of four single 5-inch dual-purpose guns. A pair of 47mm guns and six torpedo tubes in a pair of triple launchers would complete the ship's armament. Although armour thickness was not improved compared to the previous class, the 3.75-inch belt was extended over more of the ship, which at least offered a relatively comprehensive protection scheme against light cruisers and destroyers, even if it left the ship as vulnerable as its predecessors to 8-inch heavy cruiser fire. The needs of the US Navy to operate in the vast areas of the Pacific in an era before radar were clearly reflected in the ship's speed of 32.5 knots, combined with a range at cruising speed of 10,000 nautical miles. This ability to operate in and search vast areas was further augmented by four seaplanes and the hangar space to store them, which allowed the aircraft to be more easily maintained and to main remain operational for long assignments. The crew were also moved from hammocks to bunk beds, which again increased their ability to endure months spent at sea. When the United States entered World War II, however, things had changed somewhat, and as a result the ships were rapidly refitted to better suit their new operating environment. The number of 5-inch guns was doubled, and after a brief period with emergency fits of 50 calibre machine guns and 1.1-inch autocannon, the ships began to receive heavy batteries of 24 40mm and 28 20mm anti-aircraft guns. To comply with the revised American policy on cruiser armament, and also to save some weight that was needed for the new guns, the torpedo tubes were removed, since the US Navy had concluded that, firstly, if a cruiser got into a torpedo range of another ship worth launching torpedoes at, then clearly something had already gone horribly wrong. And secondly, as we've mentioned before, the American policy in the Second World War amounted to guns, guns, and even more guns. A torpedo was not a gun but it could be swapped for more guns, and so away went the torpedo launchers, and in came more guns. The class had somewhat mixed fortunes during the war, with Northampton and Houston being lost in the first year of the war to the torpedoes of Japanese destroyers, and the Chicago, despite an initially charmed life, surviving the torpedoes of Japanese midget submarines and destroyers in separate incidents, would be sunk in 1943 by aerial torpedoes from Japanese attack squadrons. Conversely, the three other ships all had very active and successful careers, although both Chester and Louisville survived major damage in the process. At the same time, though, the Augusta had everything from destroyer and submarine torpedoes, German shore batteries, Luftwaffe dive bombers, Vichy French battleships, and Japanese cruisers and suicide aircraft all throwing everything they had at her, but managed to emerge largely unscathed from the experience. The three survivors would go on to be part of Operation Magic Carpet, because let's face it, what end of the war US Navy ship wasn't, which was the return of Allied troops from various positions overseas. They were then placed in reserve in 1946, before finally being sold for scrap in 1959. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.